My name is Sofia. I have worked with mastering for many years and have this channel and also a mastering company together with Thomas. We try to put out content here that may be helpful to you in your music production. This video will be about the S-Sing in TDR Nova. TDR Nova is a free dynamic EQ that's very useful. In this plugin, to use it for the S-Sing, you will need to set some parameters like attack, release, ratio, threshold, things like that. So I'm going to go through how to think about these parameters. You can also use a deesser that has less settings or some of the parameters baked into the deesser. But it's very useful to know how to deess with a general dynamic EQ like TDR Nova because you get more control. So this is especially true for mastering since you want to set these parameters to fit the material and what you're trying to achieve. So I think a good way to get that understanding is to talk about the fundamental situation of deessing speech. And I'm going to comment also on how this is different from when you DS on a full mix. So now let's take this beat into a door to make it sound less essy. Remember to press the threshold button here to enable the dynamic section of the filter band. Otherwise it will just be a normal EQ band. So when you press uh, here, you get all those uh, controls, as you can see. Now let's start with the filter type. For the filter type, I've chosen a peak filter. I could also use a high shelving possibly. For music with vocals in the mix, the filter type will depend on if you're softening the whole high end or if you want to treat just the S sounds. If you only want to affect the S's in the music mix and not the full high end, I would also use a peak filter. Uh, I would try to keep that filter as wide as needed without becoming too intrusive on the rest of the material. In this case with speech, I will use a peak filter. I could also use a high shelving possibly, but in this case, I think it reduces too much of the high end. It's very subtle, but to me, the peak filter was a little bit less intrusive. One reason for having a high shelving could be if you have a lot of strong consonants that you also want to reduce. Then you can try to put the frequency of the shelving filter around uh, 2 kilohertz uh, to get those strong consonants as well. we'll. Go back to the peak filter. To find the S sounds and where to put the uh, peak filter here, you can solo listen with this button and just sweep through with the frequency. Now, I've already done this and thought that 7.9 kilohertz was a good idea. Usually you will find these S's around 5K to 12K, somewhere around there is good to start and see where they are, where they are the strongest. And with the Q value, I kind of set that to, I look at the S, if we do an S here, you can see the shape in the analyzer here uh, of this S area. And then I will set the Q value to kind of match that. And usually it's around 0 0.7. If you do use a high shelving, like in this uh, setting, it's good to note that if you have a Q value of under 0 0.7 here, then you won't get like a, this the bump <laughs> that you can get. If we exaggerate this and put the Q value somewhere very high uh, or much higher, you can see here, you don't want this bump. So to avoid that completely, put the interior Nova, put this uh, Q value under 0.7. Yeah, we'll go back to the peak filter. Yeah, so this is a, a good method to find the S area. So now let's talk about the uh, threshold and the ratio. So I want to treat the S's and leave the rest as intact as possible here. And I will use as high of a threshold as possible in combination uh, with a high ratio. So a high ratio would be five to one and above. And what this does is that the high ratio means that when the S's go over the threshold, they will be taken down a lot. There will be a lot of gain reduction. And keeping the threshold high 
makes a lot of details pass through without triggering the dynamic processor. So when there is a strong S sound, it will be lowered quite effectively with a high ratio, but hopefully with that high threshold that the S won't trigger on other details in the sound. In a full music mix, you can also have transients and things here that you have to consider because you don't want them to be affected. We're going to talk about what to do if they are also about the threshold and how to deal with that. Yeah, so a high ratio, as I said, would be five to one and above. And then you adjust the threshold until the S sounds are taken down sufficiently. And uh, when I set this, I just listen to when the S sounds start lisping and then I uh, kind of sweep through with the threshold to find a good level. So the gain reduction is how much the S sounds are reduced. And you can see the gain reduction here. You can see the filter working when the S's are strong. How much gain reduction you will end up with will depend on the material and where you set the threshold and ratio mainly. And uh, you can see the gain reduction in the movement of the filter. And you can also see it on the gain control here. Sss, sss, that uh, yellow thing. I actually find looking at this uh, filter movement quite uncomfortable and distracting. So I do also look away and just listen uh, to uh, also assess the results. Uh, if you're working on speech or vocals like I'm doing here, you can end up with a gain reduction as high as 5 to 10 dB. So you see the gain reduction scale here. If you have a full music mix in a mastering context, then you will end up with less gain reduction, maybe 1 to 2 dB. So you do get a feeling for those numbers the more you do it. And if I get a very weird gain reduction number, then I will definitely double check that. So it's good to have some kind of feeling for these numbers. Sometimes you will want to reduce the S's more on a full mix in mastering, but that may affect the rest of the mix too much, and then you will have to compromise. That's why the S-ing is really good to consider already in the recording and mixing. There are some MS tricks also that you could try for doing it in the mastering. Now, let's talk about the attack and release times that you have here. So these are really good to know how to set them and what happens if they're short or long. So we're going to go through that now. The attack time is the reaction speed of the dynamic processor. So if you have, for example, a too long attack time here, part of the S sound can pass through the filter more or less unaffected because the dynamic processor takes a while to reach its full gain reduction. Even though the processor reacts as the signal goes over the threshold, the longer the attack time, it's slower to reach that full gain reduction. So that's why uh, part of the S sound can leak through. So here, if we take up the attack time up a lot, I'm just going to max it. <laughs> now I'm, I'm kind of missing the S sounds, and you can see that on the gain reduction as well. It's uh, barely moving here. Usually the attack time will end up around one to five milliseconds. Actually, we can do s compared to s s. Yeah, you can see the difference in, in um, gain reduction uh, from having that very long attack time. In general, when de-essing a whole mix with music and vocals, I would use a longer attack time to not make the de trigger on the wrong details. So. A lot of transient stuff can also be found in this area. And that's quite quick. So sometimes you will want that to pass through before the de is reaching its full gain reduction. So the compromise then is that part of the S sound can leak through, as we said. And it really becomes a compromise when having both S sounds and also transient information in the, in the same mix. Let's talk about the release time as well. The release time is the recovery speed of the filter. So after the signal goes under the threshold, it takes a little bit of time until the dynamic processor is catching up to that. Too long of a release time can make the sound muddy and also pumping. Maybe I can show this. If I take the release time up a lot, the filter becomes uh, very sluggish. You can see how it almost acts as a static filter band now, a normal EQ band. The muddiness is very important to be aware of when de -sing on a whole mix, maybe less so now on speech. Um, yeah, we take the release time down again. Usually it will end up around 50 milliseconds. 
Uh, now you can see how the dynamic uh, processor is very snappy, adapting quickly to the sound. Uh, so why not always keep the release time super short to avoid this muddiness altogether? And that's because there's another side to this as well. Imagine the speech is recorded in a room with some echo, like a normal room. Um, then the S sounds will also likely be strong in this echo. Uh, the echo also won't reach the threshold in the dynamic processor. With a longer release, the dynamic processor will just keep on gain reducing for a bit, even though the echo is under the threshold. So that will keep the echo down. But with a short release, the dynamic processor, as we saw, will adapt quickly to the signal in a very snappy way and leaving this echo essay. So then you may want to have a longer release that also covers the echo to keep that in check. Usually for speech, the release time will be around 50 milliseconds, but could be longer or shorter as well, depending on the echo situation. I have found for speech that it, it is sometimes easier to just put some cushions or something around me to keep the echo in check in the recording and then mainly having to treat the direct sound in the post-production. So if you're in a song booth or something like that, you won't have this problem. So basically, uh, you want to keep the release time short to avoid muddiness, but long enough to reduce the S sounds in the echo, if you have that. When the Sing on a whole mix, release times will end up also around 50 milliseconds, but they can be shorter or longer as well. There's just less room to maneuver when the Sing on a whole mix because of the muddiness that can be created. So you will generally want to have as short release time as possible when dealing with a full mix. Yeah, so that's it for the uh, Sing. It's uh, not harder than that. Um, the Sing in mastering is more complicated and has more compromises. So yeah, definitely try to do the the Sing in the mix if you have the opportunity to. For us, though, working with mastering specifically, uh, we have to find solutions for these things. Yeah, so make sure you press the like button if you like this video. It really supports the channel and may also inspire me to make another tutorial in the near future. Thank you for watching.